foresight scope mounting scope resetting techniques you got a new scope you want to put it on your rifle first thing make sure you have a steady rest that could be a gun cleaning rest it could be a uh, lead sled but get something that's going to be steady next when you put your rings on make sure you use a level to get the stock level length and crosswise put your rings on again making sure it's level left and right when you put your scope in loosely fit the saddle rings now remove the bolt out of the rifle find a fixed object I use my neighbor's garage I can make the corrections on the mounting screws before I go to the range if the crosshair and the garage brick and garage door don't line up I just loosen these and normally I uh, tighten up one two three four this time after the range I did one two three four five six and the scope moved a little more to the right there are times that I also when I installed a new scope I had to put one ring with the tightening screw on this side and reverse the other ring there are many things that could throw your sighting picture off but quit blaming the scope your mechanicals back at the house before you go to the range that's what you need to set up so take the bolt out bore sight line the crosshairs up 35 50 yards it doesn't matter right now you're just trying to get the left right windage set up elevation same drill find a fixed object at 50 yards I have a neighbor who has a mailbox, her mailbox lid, 75 yards. If the barrel's on the mailbox lid and the crosshairs are on the mailbox lid, all I have to do is make it up and down for 75 yards. That will get me on paper. Once I'm at the range, I can make the final elevation adjustments. Leave the windage alone. If it's dead center on the mailbox, dead center on his garage door, leave the windage alone. It will change every day, every hour at the range. Quit messing with the windage. You got it perfectly centered. I've got a north wind and I've got visitors and I've got to wait for the visitors to leave okay so last week we were sighted in by going slightly left with the Marlin 880 SQ 22 caliber rimfire and the new sniper brand Michael Tango MT 6x24x50 scope. Today I've got about 5 mile an hour wind, uh, north, northeast wind coming across. So I may be a little more left, but I'll try. 
I'm going to shoot just below and a little to the left of that jagged piece of lumber. Okay, right now with the Ely ammo, I am spot on. I'm gonna put one more. If that's the case, I'll tell you what I did in my garage when we get back to the garage. Spot on. Now I'm going to lower the cradle to the target. Okay, first. And today, I'm going to shoot the green and yellow targets. Upper left, green target, Ely 36 grain, subsonic hollow point. 100 yards. Woo! Did you see that? See, that's the part that kills me. Remember, it has a micro groove barrel, which is shallower. Going to shoot the top right with Winchester 36 grain varmint hollow point, otherwise referred to in my videos as 555, which is the quantity that the ammo came in. I'll see that shot high and left. Ah. All right, I'm going to aim at six o'clock. See, it's not always, it's never your scope. It's the barrel and the ammo. Now, will I change the elevation dial? No. I know for a fact that 115 yards, I'm hitting the impact point just under that log. I have subtensions, hash marks, holdover marks. I can adjust my up my elevation up and down just by using the hash marks. Learn to use your scope. I can't preach this enough. Come out, take three or four different brands of ammo. Find the best ammo for that rifle. My CZ and my Marlin do not shoot the same. Two hash marks down from the top bar, aimed right at the orange dot, put the bullet nine o'clock orange dot. You see, it's not the scope. It's the ammunition, a 22 rimfire, you're throwing a lead slug, not a tapered bullet. For those of you who keep asking me about the chip, white chipmunk to the right, that's the actual size of the target of the prairie dog that we shoot at 200 meters, 219 yards.
me is just above the orange dot. So, four hash marks, holdover, subtensions above the main crosshair. One windage to the left. Again, it is not the scope, the barrel and the ammo. And of course, the shooters. All right, there it is at 14 power, 100 yards. Alright, in the garage, last week when I came out I was shooting extremely left, so I was running out of windage. I brought the rifle home, set it up in a fixture, the lead sled, removed these two top cradles, actually just loosened them. I normally torque one, two, three four. This time I torqued one, two, three, four. You see the results today.